people's garages and work in my car. Do your damn thing! Live your life! Cause I'll have idiocy on deck. And you'll be entertained as well! Take that! To the bank! To the bank! What's up, you slappy bastards? <laughs> Welcome back to Soup to Nuts where things aren't always what they seem, but they might be. They very well might be. Thanks for checking out the video. If you like it, please give me a like and comment and subscribe all that good crap down here. Subscribe down here. Uh, today's video, I'll be working on the body kit for the 350Z. Hey, 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 hey. You already saw the video. I picked the car up from the tuner and it runs fantastic. Yeah! Stay tuned! You are tuned in to Ryan Campbell, Soup to Nuts. Alright, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for sticking around. Appreciate it. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, I'm painting the body kit in this video. I'm hopefully, I haven't gotten there yet. I'm, I'm not an expert at all. This is not a how-to video. This is a watch idiot screw everything up in his life video. I'm the idiot, by the way. So, I got the uh, body kit. And uh, basically, I already started preparing it and whatnot. Uh, so, let me show you where it stands now. And then we'll proceed further. With your permission, of course. Uh, previous videos, I did fit this all onto the car, so that's in other videos, and I'll link them up here, uh, or I'll link at least one of them up here. It's all on the playlist for this build, for this car build, so it's in there, uh, fitting this stuff up. This is actually the fourth bumper. The first three were from Vicrez. And none of them fit even kind of close at all whatsoever. So this is the rear bumper. So this is KBD. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with KBD. It came pretty well. I already did the uh, cleaning and scrubbing procedure that you, you know, you're supposed to get because uh, these body kits come with like a mold release agent a little bit on it. It's kind of like a, a greasy film of some sort. I'm not a chemist here, so don't ask me these questions. Stop with the questions. Uh, so I already did the cleanup procedure. It's got a little dusty from sanding the garage, but this is pretty much ready for primer at this point. I really didn't have to do much to it. Just had to clean it up. It fit pretty well. Tiny, tiny adjustments, but this was pretty good. This, on the other hand, this is a V-Crest. This is the front bumper. Those are the two side skirts I'll show you a little closer. Um, I already had to sand the living crap out of it. I've sanded and sanded and sanded. It was freaking, it was so screwed up. I've put so much, so many hours into this damn thing. I mean, you can even see like where the tape lines were. It is ridiculous. So, um, I'm at the step now where I'm using uh, glazing putty. I, I suppose you could probably also use like flexible filler. But it, it, it's really small imperfections that I'm filling. So, it's, if it's anything deep, you really have to use a filler. These are just like small, small, tiny pinhole type of things that I'm... I'm trying to just kind of smooth out. I know it looks like a freaking blind guy just shaved here, but it's glazing putty. Yeah, I'll show you. Where is it? Glazing and spot putty. Bondo brand. 3M owns the Bondo apparently now. Uh, so I'm using that. So uh, this is the first step of that. Uh, so yeah, that's the front bumper. And here's the side skirts. It, it, the side skirts weren't as bad, but they are you're still a lot worse than the KBD. These are V-Crest as well. They still need a little bit of work. I still have to do a little uh, glazing putty. These are kind of pretty much sanded down. And pretty, they, sh they should be ready if it wasn't for the freaking shit plastic that they give me. Um, so these are the two side skirts. I kind of have them just hanging up on the wall because I, I previously washed them after I sanded to get the dust off. So they're drying up here. 
So that's really the next step. Let this crap dry here. Then I'll, I'll sand that after it dries. But in the meantime, I'll glaze putty this. Uh, I don't think I'm really gonna, probably not gonna time lapse it. It's just, you just use a spreader and put it on and sand it off once it's dry. It's like 25 minutes it says it dries, depending on the environment, depending on the conditions. So I'll bring you back once I'm basically this old glazed putty and all sanded ready for primer. I'll show you everything like pre-primer and then I'll, I probably will like time lapse or video or do like a video clip of doing the primer. I'm probably going to do it in the backyard. Uh, the actual paint work, like the base coat and clear coat I'm going to do here in the garage. I uh, obviously have to kind of clean some things up a little bit. I'm going to plastic off uh, some of the stuff in the garage just so it doesn't get overspray on it type of thing. Uh, they're gonna put a couple fans in the windows, so I'll have a good setup going. Uh, stay, 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 stay tuned. I'm all set up here in the backyard. I'm gonna do the primer in the backyard and the base coat, clear coat in the garage. So this is pretty much it, ready to go. I still have to do. Uh, first, I'm gonna do a wax and grease remover, and then I'm gonna put an adhesion promoter on it, and then do the primer. So this is. Side skirts, rear bumper, and here's front bumper. I'll, uh, let's get going. I'm probably only going to show you on camera doing the primer because that's the only thing you can really see. The other stuff is clear, so you, you're just going to see me walking around in circles like a stupid idiot. Not that I'm not already a stupid idiot, but you get the picture. did get the primer finished. This is uh, two coats. I did go ahead, uh, after I primered it, I did see, you know, it revealed a bunch of uh, little tiny flaws, so I figure I'll take a little extra time now to have a better end result. So, uh, I already off camera, I uh, did a lot of uh, glazing putty, filled in a lot of little tiny imperfections, and sanded it down already. No, this camera isn't the greatest. I think the gray is not, it's messing the focus up a little bit, but, um, but sanded it down and I also, I washed it. So it, it's a good idea, like after you do sanding or work on, on a piece before you get to the painting part, you uh, actually wash it. And uh, don't use any soap or car soap that has like waxes and that type of thing in it because you don't want any type of coating or anything like that. You just want the raw material, the raw primer. So uh, I actually use uh, Dawn dish soap. As you can see right there, even though it's backwards, but that's Dawn dish soap because uh, it has like degreasers in it. So it's good to, you know, because your hands and everything have been on it. So it's a good idea to get any kind of grease oils off. I'm going to use wax and grease remover again because I am doing another coat to cover up all, you know, all these uh, little red spots. This is from the glazing putty. So I'm doing another coat of primer. So I am going to be doing a wax and grease remover, and I'm also going to do an adhesion promoter again, because uh, there's a few spots just here and there where I, I sand it through down to the plastic. Uh, so I just want to make sure that it's, you know, 100% sticking properly. But it, it turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. I am ecstatic. I know you can sense it in my voice, because you're just a smart person. Uh, when I did the uh, the primer, when I mixed the primer, uh, this is a tiny bit that was left over and I just let it dry up because I didn't know what the hell else to do with it. Uh, I mixed the primer. I did put uh, flex agent in it. So I'm going to have flex agent in the primer and then also in the clear coat. Uh, apparently uh, I'm not supposed to put it according to the, uh, uh, the technical data sheet. It says, you know, just the uh, primer and clear coat, not the base coat. So... I did put a little bit of the flex agent in there, so it, it's good on, uh, you know, because these are all urethane, because, so obviously, you know, there's going to be some flex and movement in them, uh, you know, when you drive the car and everything like that. Uh, steel panels, you don't have to worry about that because there's not too much flex in steel panels. I know on, like, hoods, roofs, you know, you can move them a little bit, but you get the picture. I hope you do because you're a smart person. Uh, so I put some flex agent in here, and you can kind of see how it works a little bit. Uh, so this is just like from what I poured out into the gun, uh, and you kind of see, like it doesn't crack apart, like regular paint would start cracking. Obviously it's not sticking to the side of the container because, 
you know, in order for it to stick, the container would have had to be, you know, like it's plastic. You, you would have had to sand it, put an adhesion promoter, all that type of thing. But obviously, you don't want to stick to the mixing container. You want it to come out of the mixing container. But that's the reason it's not sticking. But you can see the uh, flex properties. It doesn't crack. I, I ripped it. A rip isn't a crack. A rip isn't a crack. Uh, so next you're going to see, uh, I'm going to set up again in the backyard and do another coat of primer. So next you're going to see is a uh, time lapse of doing the uh, primer coat, or more primer coat of all this stuff. Padoki. I almost screwed that up. I, I mean, I, I kind of did, but uh, you can see the crap behind me. Come on a little trip with me. Let's take a ride to the sea. This is why I work on cars and don't sing. Uh, a little dizzy. So, it uh, went pretty good. I'll show you what, what I'm working with. Yeah, uh, sorry for the zoom. Uh, so it uh, turned out pretty good. Uh, I ran out of primer, so um, I didn't do like a full complete coat. I really just did the areas that needed it. Uh, the other areas that didn't get sanded or uh, glazed putty or anything like that, I still have the you know the two coats I originally did, so that should be okay. Uh, but luckily, I had enough paint to get the old job done. So that's the uh, rear bumper. Here's the front guy. Here's the, this is driver's side side skirt. And here's the passenger side side skirt. <sighs> so, it went, went, went pretty good, went pretty good. So next step. Uh, I'm gonna sand all this. I'm gonna sand it with 800, 800 grit. Uh, to you know, you want to smooth the primer out before you do the base coat, the color. So I'm gonna do that off camera. I'm gonna block sand it. So that means you don't know, just take a piece of sandpaper with your hand because it's like you you're putting uneven pressure, so you'll get uneven marks and it'll kind of you know it'll it'll make it a little bit wavy. When you block sand, you use a sanding block or, you know, piece of wood or whatever you got. That's nice and flat and straight. So that way when you sand, it's nice, uniform, flat, and it keeps a nice flat surface. And it makes a nice flat surface. So I'm going to block sand, uh, 800, and then clean it all up again, do the whole process, you know, washing it down like you're washing a car, kind of, but don't use soap with wax in it. Uh, so wash it down. Uh, let it dry, uh, then I'm going to do wax and grease remover again, then uh, tack cloth. You don't do per uh, adhesion promoter again. Uh, that's just like onto, you're putting uh, like primer or whatever onto raw material or sealer. Wax and grease remover, then uh, tack cloth it, tack rag, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then it'll be time for the color coat. So I'll bring you back when I'm actually, all that's done and I'm ready to actually spray the color. And I got a bunch of stuff that I have to do in the garage. I'm going to do a little uh, makeshift spray booth inside the garage. So it's going to be a little sketch, but hopefully, hopefully your boy gets the job done. Uh, pretty much set up a couple of little tiny things I have to do. Uh, I spent all day off camera setting this garage up, getting all this crap clean and sand and all that. And it's a long day, so uh, 
Tomorrow I'm gonna put the uh, I'm gonna put fans in the windows. Uh, so we'll have uh, window fans. We'll have uh, fans in the windows. I put like intake filters. I know this is janky. I know this is some shady ass shit, but I'm I'm fucking poor. I live on the streets. I just uh, break into people's garages and work in my car. Uh, luckily, these these uh, people that live here haven't called the cops on me, so I, I feel pretty settled. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm gonna do that first thing and basically get paid. I'll show you the parts up close. Here's for a pupper. They're still kind of wet because they have to dry off. That's how the light how life works. Uh, here's the rear spoiler, which you haven't seen yet in this video. Uh, but you have seen, if you've seen other videos, I did have it mounted on the car for a while. Uh, it fits perfectly, so I just need to re-clear coat it, so it'll look beautiful. Uh, it'll look like carbon fiber. Uh, it came with like a gel coat type of thing, but it like scuffed so easily, it was, it was ridiculous. I pretty much looked at it and started scuffing, so, uh, I realized I gotta do like a real clear coat on it. Uh, so side skirt. Side skirt and give you a closer of the rear bumper. Uh, rear bumper. So I have it. I uh, wet sanded with uh, 800 uh, to get it nice and smooth. It did have a little bit of a rough texture because the last coat honestly wasn't the greatest, just because I really I ran out of paint and I couldn't do a good thick wet coat like I would like to have. Uh, but it's life. What are you gonna do? You live, you learn. I'm not, again, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, so I'm learning as I go here. Uh, I put a little uh, zipper door thing to have, uh, Home Depot. It's like 10 bucks. Uh, I put that so I could get in and out, basically. Um, I'll show you. I have like half of the garage kind of separated. Uh, so I have that half of the garage because I don't want to get overspray over everything. Uh, sorry for the, the shoddy camera work. Again, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I don't want to get overspray over everything, and it'll take like three fucking years to like empty the garage. That that ain't happening. Um, so I basically plasticed off everything. I plastic off those shelves, plastic off over there. Uh, I'm not too worried about the workbench. If there's a little bit of overspray, it's kind of a little bit old and kind of beat up. And when I do the garage remodel, I might paint that. Um, that's one of the videos I'm planning on doing uh, after I'm done with this car crap. Uh, I'm going to kind of like clean up and like make the garage more functional, paint the walls. Yeah. Uh, I might paint that, so I'm really not worried about overspray. I did protect I have There's a couple tools right in there, so I want to get that messed up. So I'll plastic that off. Uh, got filter, filter. I don't know if this is going to work, but yeah, I'm, I'm giving it an effort. I'm giving it an effort. Um, what I'm thinking I might try to do, because I'm really worried, I don't want to like time lapse or video like painting it here because there, there's probably going to be a decent amount of overspray in the air. I don't want to screw up my camera. This is the only good camera I have, uh, you know, besides my phone obviously, but I, I, I really don't want to mess up this camera. So, what I'm contemplating doing maybe is like... On the other side, like here, setting up the tripod or whatever, and just cutting a hole kind of like in the plastic just for the lens to pop through. Uh, just so, uh, It might not be a perfect angle, but at least it'll kind of catch something. Uh, at least, I mean, the main part of really watching that, that uh, for, that, I'm fucking tired, get off my ass! The main part uh, that's really visually appealing here uh, is seeing it go from gray to blue. That's gonna be the, the cool part, especially on video. That's gonna be the cool part for me too, but especially on video, uh, that's gonna be the cool part of the whole painting process, is seeing it go from primer gray, which is it's got light gray, to uh, Daytona blue. Uh, so I might set that up and uh, I don't know, we'll see what happens. I might put like a little like serrate wrap or something over, over the front of the lens. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna work again. I haven't done this shit before. You're taking a ride with me. <sighs> yeah. All right, uh, so uh, I don't know what you're gonna see next, but keep fucking watching or I'll punch you and your fucking juggler and you will die from a brain aneurysm. I'm that kind of guy. <laughs> So 
So I realized I was editing the video. I actually have all the paintwork done and everything like that uh, at this point. Um, but I was going to edit uh, the video. I got through a lot of it. I realized it was just getting way too damn long. So I'm basically splitting it in half. So I'm doing this like little outro after the fact. After everything's been filmed. Um, all the paintwork is done on the, uh, on the body kit and the wing and everything like that. Um, so... Here I am doing an official outro postmortem. I that's not the right word, but fuck it, I'm rolling with it. Postmortem. Eat a dick. <laughs> uh, you don't you don't have to, have, to, have to do that unless you want to. Then you know, do your thing, man. Just or woman, whatever, man, woman, do your damn thing. Live your life. So you're gonna have to stay tuned though to find out how the finished product ends up. And the uh, hurdles that I have to jump along the way. It, it wasn't an easy ride. Uh, but I learned a lot. I uh, learned, And I'm going to learn a lot, actually, in the next video. Because, you know, the next video isn't out yet. <laughs> you see? You see? Uh, no. No. Uh, whatever. I, I tried. I tried. You can't, you can't blame me for not trying. Because I tried. Uh, so stay tuned for the rest of the paintwork. Uh, you'll see it turn blue and pretty and all that good crap and see, you know, what happens along the way and everything like that. And you'll be entertained as well. Take that to the bank. To the bank. Uh, stay tuned for the next crap uh, for the rest of that. Uh, and then after that, it's going to be installing the body kit as well. Uh, after all the paintwork's done, that's going to be another video after that. And then I'm just going to keep the bus rolling. Keep the bus rolling. Even if I have to cut the fucking brake lines. With the children on board. Such is life. Uh, so stay tuned. Check me out on all my other socials down below. Uh, please like the damn video. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the love very, very much. And stay tuned. And I appreciate that as well. And uh, yeah, keep checking back for uh, more idiocy. Because I'll have idiocy on deck. End up at the batter's plate as well. The batter's plate. <laughs> up in the batter's box. The hitter's box. Whatever you want to call it. Up at the plate. At the plate with a fork and a knife. And a baseball bat. Ready to do some damage. Uh, I'll finish my rant. And I'll, uh, I'll rant more on my own. In the quiet corner of the room. After I turn the lights off. And cry, cry to myself. Yep, that's, that's uh, my uh, story. I'm sticking with it. So stay tuned, and don't forget, drive fast, take chances.